Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, The Arbor. Now, The Arbor is, I guess, a documentary. It's kind of a docudrama. It's about a British playwright named Andrea Dunbar, who wrote kind of working class English uh, plays like The Arbor. And it's about her life and her children's lives, and she had children pretty young. Her first kid, Lorraine, who, after we follow Andrea Dunbar, she dies fairly young and then the film follows Lorraine and what happens to her after her mother's death and I mean it was following her before but it kind of the storyline really just focuses on her after that point. This film is unlike most documentaries because most documentaries are just either a series of talking heads. They take the audio from the real people and they have actors lip sync it. So they'd have an actor would be walking or there'd be something going on visually like they talked about when they accidentally lit their mattress on fire and they're like standing in front of a mattress that's on fire behind them. And you couldn't really do that in a documentary. So it's a lot more dynamic. The lip sync's actually really good. I don't, there are only a few times I'd be like, oh, they skipped a word, but it was really like perfect. And it reminds me kind of of Rumblefish, the way they use the audio because Rumblefish was all post, which I think when I heard about this idea, I was like, I don't know, that seems like it could be contrived, but it kind of works like emotionally. I really believe the actors I saw were the people, but they're not the people. But the audio I heard are Andrea Dunbar's family members. And then they cut in, they also have video of Andrea Dunbar, like the real Andrea Dunbar, and her real family members from like various BBC uh, interviews and reports. And they have her play The Arbor. They have scenes of it going on in the place she wrote it and where it takes place in this like kind of housing project, which looks really bizarre because they're putting on a play but there's all these real people standing around them. Even though it's very emotional and you're hearing this really tragic story of this family and like this hard, serious life, but at the same time, it's having this kind of intellectual theory going on, but the emotion works as well as the theory, which just makes it, it's such a, it's a very rich, deep film. It's like a debate over universal truth because how I know someone isn't how someone else knows someone, and which version of that someone is correct is the truth, you know, or an event, how I witness it from my perspective might not ring true to you and how you perceive that event. You're going through what, what universal truth even means or how you're perceived, you know, through your family members and how like you might find something you do, did very justified and understand the causes behind it and other people might just think you're crazy and not understand that justification. So from their perspective, like, oh, well, he was very crazy that day. And I think, especially with uh, Lorraine, I think she looks at herself as like the outsider of the family and the way the other members of the family talk about her, what something she did versus how she talks about something she did is very different. They look at her as more erratic. It's really interesting how these different perspectives are really used within this film. It kind of builds the story and the drama of it all. And at the same time, you have Andrea Dunbar, Lorraine's mother's play going on in the estates where they lived. And those are based on kind of real life and people and stuff that happened in the estates. So then you think, well, that's a version of the truth also. And then you also have how many people probably perceived her from those news reports going on at the same time. It, it makes me think like, as comfortable as you are with the perception of yourself, what is the real majority perception of yourself? Or even Andrea Dunbar, because we don't really, we don't get her talking now. You know, this is all from the past because she died. And I, I almost look at the play parts as visions of the past, like they're ghosts. They're kind of haunting the streets or something. It did make me think, Think about like universal truth but at the same time like emotionally it, it resonates with you it definitely makes you think about your relationships with people and how you are perceived the truth within you that might be the truth if 20 people think of you in a different way what is the exact perception of you is it your perception or is it their perception or is there no truth at all and i i don't think this film gives you an answer on universal truth it's not like there is or there isn't i think it, it kind of debates it 
and it debates it with, you know, Lorraine and her family. I mean, it kind of makes me wonder which is the correct, for, you know, is Lorraine like just dramatic and trying to be the center of attention? She's just trying to shock you. Or, you know, if you look at it more from her perspective, I think you think of it like, you know, these are things she needed to do or their mistakes she made and you know they're very justified the documentary is at its best when it has a really good director behind it and i think this film is just excellently directed interesting way to do a documentary it kind of shows what you can do with the documentary you don't have to just make talking heads because who wants to just watch a talking head all the time it's a very strong film it's very it's it's both an analytical film and an emotional film and i think that's there, there's nothing better than seeing something like that, I think. So, if you have seen The Arbor and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments, and subscribe if you would like to.